Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Bernie. I'm a concept art mentor at CG Spectrum. And today we are going to draw animals for this life drawing session. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I love drawing animals, probably my favorite thing to draw out of everything. Just, I guess it's because there's such a variety and they all look so different and interesting. So I'll show you uh, some of the images that uh, we're going to be looking at. I'm doing good. Hey, Shakar. Yeah, so let's just flip through some of these. And we are going to be warming up on these, doing some quick sketches. And eventually we will, or I will be selecting maybe three of these to focus on. And generally when I'm looking for images, I'm always looking for images with good lighting. Just anything that really captures uh, something that I want to learn um, when I look at the image, like looking at these different shapes and how the lighting's hitting the forms, the muscles and the structure of the uh, animal, right? Or maybe even the different textures that you see, um, just practicing how to render that or indicate that when I'm doing concepts. Yeah, and even how the uh, different lighting situations, how it changes uh, the colors in the shadows or depending on the local color, what it, how it affects the color, things like that. Again, different textures. This, this pigeon looks super cool. You can see all the different layering of the feathers. <laughs> hey, what's up, Rushback? Hey, Patrick. Hey, who likes uh, drawing animals here? But yeah, even this, like, look at how the colors are just changing, all that variation in color. Pink to this, like, reddish-orange salmon color, back to this very white-pink. All these different color transitions is what I want to try to capture and the different layering that's going on here. And again, as a concept artist, whenever I am looking at reference or to do reference or studies from reference, I'm always trying to think of, again, how am I going to translate this into my own work, my own creature designs um, or any kind of design? Um, yeah, I'm not simply trying to copy the reference, even though, of course, I'm it's a you know, I'm trying to follow the reference somewhat closely but I'm not um, trying to copy. I'm trying to see how I'm gonna translate this lighting situation, these textures into my own designs. And also just studying the different shapes of the animals, really focusing on observation, right? And that's the other thing I'm gonna be talking about is how to uh, develop your observational skills. Um, you could pretty much draw anything if you develop your observational skills. Uh, of course, like no one has the time to, you know, do the full anatomy a study on every animal that exists, right? So you're going to have to do a lot of guesswork. And that guesswork comes from, again, looking at the overall shapes, looking at the angles and the shapes that the silhouette and the interior forms are creating. Uh, looking at the uh, surface of uh, the animal and seeing like where the the skin is thinner maybe to indicate where it might be indicating like bone structure right like uh, joints and things like that opposed to curves and larger forms that may be indicating muscle mass or fat right and so how we describe those different uh, parts of the anatomy are going to depend on, again, if the bone is close to the surface, if there's large muscle masses or fat masses, right? That's how we're going to be uh, 
trying to understand the overall anatomy and indicate the overall forms and volume of the, each animal. Because again, I don't understand the, um, you know, the anatomy of all these animals. And of course, if you really want to gr be great at drawing animals, you do have to study uh, the anatomy, the skeleton, the muscles, all the tendons and where they connect and the proportions of those uh, different limbs, right? And how they relate to each other. Uh, but again, uh, when we're doing these studies, we're trying to learn how to draw anything uh, pretty much without understanding that for these studies at least, because these studies will be not in depth. They're just more about, again, observing how to observe and draw what you see. All right, cool, let's get started. Hey, Martin, what's up, Martin? Hey, Tatum and Janner. Hey, Margaret. Oh, you like drawing animals, I know you do. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Okay, let's see. Who's drawing with me here? Maybe you guys weren't ready with some animal reference. Just Google some animal reference real quick and let's draw together. All right, so for now, I'm not going to show the reference. I will be showing it later on once uh, I select those three images. All right, so I'm drawing a little baby elephant here. And yeah, I'm trying to see the overall flow. Of course, I'm not. I don't think I drew an elephant too often, maybe two, three times. So I'm trying to look quickly and see the overall shapes and the flow of the curves. And focus on the large and medium shapes. I'm not trying to focus on the details, just trying to focus on the large and medium shapes here. What's up, homie Martin? Oh, you're working on the CG contest piece, uh, Patrick? Cool. Can't wait to check it out. Uh, what kind of brush? Uh, I could use many different brushes, uh, but for now I'm just using a round brush. It doesn't, I'm not too picky about what brushes I use when I'm just doing studies. Uh, I guess I can get, become pickier, but I haven't been recently. I just need to draw. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. But of course, uh, something that gives more variation. I'm actually going to turn off my transfer because it's making me a little more hesitant. Uh, I think I want to just go a little bolder. But yeah, sometimes I'll do these uh, sketch lines here to push things back a little bit quickly. Uh, yeah. And I could indicate shadow real quick like that. And I'm trying to remember these are just gestures. Let's keep going. Quick warm ups. It's easy to get caught up, right? All right, this is a bison.
Yeah, the bison has some crazy proportions. It looks super cool. But again, I don't really understand the anatomy, so I'm really trying to focus on the overall shapes. Sometimes, to be honest, it's easier to block this stuff in with a large brush. Um, but for now, I'm going to try to warm up with line drawings. Yeah, my proportions are quite off right now. Because it has all this, uh, like, super thick fur on it, right? So it's hiding a lot of the anatomy. I'm going to use the work tool to adjust it a bit. Keep going. All right, more bison. I'm gonna put that rib cage in there. It's at a in perspective actually here. Wow, look at these proportions are crazy. And look at the overall volume. It's hard to read from the photo, but it's doing my best. <clears throat> There's another one here, so I'm just going to draw another bison from a different angle. Alright, cool. Let's look at some questions. Uh, 
Margaret's asking, how do you tell yourself when you've done enough for a sketch? I keep getting way too into it and spend too much time on just one sketch. Um, yeah, so again, these are obviously warm ups. So I'm trying to not get too uptight or caught up in things looking perfect, obviously, because I'm not spending much time on it. It is hard to do because I keep wanting to fix things, right? Uh, but yeah, in general, once you get what you want out of a drawing or a study, you could stop, you know. Uh, so for example, yeah, let's see, I'm drawing this chimp here. And the main focus for me is to uh, study this, the angle of his head, like the three quarter angle of his head. So once I figure that out and understand, you know, I get something out of it. Let's say I'm doing like a Planet of the Apes concept or something, right? I don't know, something like that. And I want to understand the proportions of the chimp's face and things like that. Then uh, yeah, once you get enough out of it, because you're not going to get everything out of one study, right? You're going to have to do dozens of studies, like if I'm doing you know, Planet of the Apes. I want to get familiar with what these apes' faces look like and the proportions and all the details. So uh, once I get enough out of a study, I'll move on to the next study, right? So that's how you know is it's not about completing it so it looks pretty or whatever, or to impress somebody else, right? Um, it's really for your own self, your own studies. So once you get it far enough to where you get it and you understand it, then you move on. So in this case, these are all sketches. So, you know, it's a little different, but when you're painting, um, you know, it's a little bit clearer when you should stop because yeah, again, if you're doing a lighting study with cool and warm lighting on coming from different sides, you'll do, focus on that aspect of a study, right? You're not trying to get, again, everything out of one study. And sometimes, you know, admittedly, I'll mindlessly do studies, right? I'm not thinking too much, I'm just having fun. Uh, yeah, just responding to an image. Um, but it is, I feel like better or time is used more wisely if you have clear intentions about what you're trying to get out of a study, if that makes sense. Cool, I think uh, let's get started on some uh, drawings uh, with more time on them. The hardest part is choosing which one to do. They all look so cool. All right, let's look at these. Let's try this one. I don't even know what this is. A scarlet something. Ib ibis? I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. So I'm really going to start pretty much the same as my uh, warm up. I want to stay really loose. I'm trying to remind myself of that constantly because I want to get tighter on the drawing. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to stay loose here. I already feel myself getting uh, more uptight about this stuff, tightening up instead of loosening. So I'm really trying to fight that.
looking at the overall shape and the relationship of all the shapes to uh, again the different forms that are in the uh, anatomy of this creature and I don't have enough room so I'm going to scale this in And I will redraw over this. Right now I'm kind of, again, sketching it in quite messy. Just trying to move forward with it. Whoops, I forgot to show you the image. Let me cut that out and bring it into Photoshop. I'll just set it right there. Paying attention to the negative shapes as well. Again, not really trying to copy, but when the negative shapes or things in the image look cool, then why not, you know? Why not learn to use what's there? And once again, I'm checking it out and the proportions are very off. So I'm just going to grab the legs and shrink them. And part of this is really a uh, training your eye to see what looks right. I'm not, you know, going to get it in one shot, especially when it's something that I don't draw, draw often. So again, yeah, it's good not to get hung up on getting it perfect on the first try, even though you're trying to, you should try to, but it's okay if you don't. I'm talking to myself make myself feel better. <laughs> All right, so there's the eye. There's a little cheek area. I guess that's a jaw. It looks like a cheek. But... And I'm also paying attention to the angles that I see in the silhouette. I'm exaggerating the shape. You see how I'm making that into an angle instead of a curve, right? I want to exaggerate the shapes I see. And that's also good for um, later on when you're creating your own creatures or just designs in general. You're able to um, see the shapes better or create interesting shapes. So here I'm going back and trying to uh, refine the shapes a little better. Decide on what kind of shapes I want to create. I, you don't want to leave the overall shapes ambiguous. You want to define them somewhat. And the way everyone approaches this is going to, of course, be slightly different. There's no right or, well, there is, there is, uh, you know, sometimes when you do this, it's not going to look right. So just try different things until it looks good in terms of like how you define the shapes. Because there is no, I guess, one way of doing it. Oh, 
Oh, it's a, a flippy. It's an Australian bin chicken. It's interesting. Hey Tatum, uh, what animals would you say I'm the most familiar with drawing? Hmm. I've drawn a lot of lions. Uh, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, dogs, I guess. Cats. Uh, some smaller birds. Lizards, things like that, fish. But of course, there's so many different varieties, they all look different. All right, cool. So, from here, let me define it a little bit more. I was going to redraw over this, like on a different layer, but I'm just going to go with what I have right now just because of time. And I'm gonna try to paint it up real quick. Let me kind of define what I see in the interior of these wings. See, it's kind of like abstract here. If you look here, it's really abstract looking like there's random. It looks kind of random, right? So what I'm trying to do when I'm looking at this reference is I'm trying to make sense out of it. And I might, I'm probably not gonna be 100% accurate, but again, I'm still gonna try to visually make sense out of it. So I'm trying to separate things and simplify things. So I see this as one big wing shape. And then I see like a little overlap right here. Uh, maybe that's like the shoulder part of it. So I see a center part right here where the back is and then a shoulder area right here, like this area. So I'm gonna to try to define that and separate that as a form. Does that make sense? And then of course these feathers, and then a little subtle lump right here within this area that I'm gonna to try to describe as well. And then here it flattens out a bit. Okay, so that's what I'm kind of seeing when I see that. And again, that's what you always want to do is try to simplify the forms and make sense out of the forms and just make decisions on how things are overlapping. All right, so let's do that here. I'm looking at the shapes again. The shapes are very important to make things look interesting. Now the center back piece, something like that. And the other part of that wing on the other side. I'm gonna exaggerate that angle right there. And let's go into the face a little bit and define anything that needs defining here at this point so we don't have to guess later on. There's not much going on here. Okay. A little throat area right here. All right, cool. So let's go with this. Flatten this up. Let me save this real quick. I'm going to colorize it. And for now, I'm going to paint under it. I'm going to make that line drawing a multi on a multiply layer. Hey Patrick, how do you train to be more stylized? I always tend to go for a more realistic style, and if I want to switch it up, I can't. 
Right. So the way, one way of doing it is again, um, pushing and exaggerating what you see. Uh, so proportions, right? You could push the proportions, you could push the, uh, the angles and the shapes that you're creating. You know, I could like exaggerate this a lot more if I wanted to, right? You could like really push it. You know what I mean? And you can really simplify it even more too, right? The more you simplify, of course, it's gonna look more stylized and more cartoony, right? Like, so this beak I could do, you know, just depending on what it is, I could simplify it like that, make it a circle for the eye, get rid of all the little details, right? And exaggerate the aspects of this animal or character that uh, the characteristics of that animal or character that are unique to it, right? So if the legs are kind of long, you want to make it even longer, right? For example, right? That's how you can practice, um, you know, stylizing it. And also, you know how they do uh, the caricature artists, right? They're looking at reference as well or drawing from life, right? Uh, and they're just pushing everything. So if uh, Jay Leno's chin is like, keep big, right? You want to make it like triple the size, right? Uh, so yeah, it's just exaggerating everything and simplifying. Uh, do Flippy, do you think about why you're making certain lines thicker? Uh, yes, in this case, I'm not really focused on the line drawing itself because uh, my style for this study is not going to be a uh, uh, to show off the line drawing, right? It's more of gonna be a painting. Um, but in general, if I'm doing a line drawing where, or an art style where the line drawing is gonna show through, then I would really be thinking about my line weight. And the way I generally um, think about line weight is, uh, it depends on the lighting as well. So if the light source is coming from here, uh, there's, it's, the thicker the lines, it's gonna indicate shadowing, right? So my line wouldn't be thick here, right? It would be thick underneath the beak because that's where the shadows are gonna show up, right? Not shadows, but like the dark, uh, darker areas where light can't get to, right? Same goes for areas that two forms are meeting, like the beak area. Dark, the light can't get in there, right? Cause they are touching. So that's where it'd be thicker. But the light's hitting this top part, so it's not gonna be dark, as dark, right? The form is gonna come from here, getting lighter as it gets to the area where the light's hitting it. Same goes for down here, it's darker because the light's gonna, not gonna be getting to it. And wherever the overlaps are. So for example, this wing is overlapping the body right there, or the neck area. So in that case, I can make it slightly thinner in the back right here. Where it's about to overlap with that wing and I make that wing a little thicker, the line weight thicker. So the overlap's clear. Also underneath that wing, I would make it a lot thicker. So it shows shadowing, indicate shadows and weight. It gives it more weight when the line weight is thicker on the bottom because you automatically I think the human eye automatically sees uh, weight to an object or a drawing when they see shadowing underneath it because that's usually how you see objects right the larger the object is the more shadowing shadows it's going to create right so you see that as like mass and weight so of course under the feet where it's touching the ground or whatever the branch or whatever it's on, it'll be darker, things like that. And of course, this leg is overlapping this back leg, so that line weight will be thicker as well. All right, cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, they go through that also in a CG Spectrum's uh, concept art program. They have a, a line weight uh, session where, you know, you learn about how to put in line weight and make clear overlaps through your line weight. 
All right, let's keep going with this. I'm gonna choose a light pink, slightly dis, ooh, I'm on color dodge. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a light pink. Basically, I'm choosing a color and value that um, I feel like is the majority of this image or this uh, creature here. And it's not 100% accurate, I'm just gonna, something in the ballpark is good enough for now and I can make adjustments later. Hey, no problem, Flippy. Yeah, so I'm just filling the whole thing in. In this case, I am gonna fill the whole thing in because it's pretty much the same color everywhere, same hue at least. So I'm really trying to see things as a silhouette here and make a nice, interesting silhouette. By the way, the other reason why it's good to learn how to sketch really fast is because if you ever truly draw from life, right? Like you go to the zoo or something and draw animals there, uh, you do have to be quick because they're always moving, right? So you want to capture whatever you see on paper, like at least the gist of it very quickly. So that's one of the reasons why you, you want to practice sketching stuff in real quick. The other reason why I'm blocking this all in as well is uh, just to harmonize the colors later on when I build up uh, the colors in the painting here. Um, I want some of that base color to be peeking through overall in the uh, character. So to har again, that will help harmonize the colors automatically. I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up my line drawing so it's not too strong. Something like that's cool. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make a clipping mask on top of my base color and start adding in some uh, shadows. I am going to switch to a soft brush, like an airbrush type, so I don't create uh, too many brush strokes. Oops, we got to connect that. Let's go to transfer. That's a bit desaturated. Let's go with this and then I'll, you know, I can adjust the colors later on or the value later on. As long as it's dark where I can start um, building up the uh, values and showing off the forms, it's gonna do its job. So yeah, this way when you do a clipping mask, it's, you know, you don't have to worry about your edges. So it's very quick to lay stuff in. And get some quick results in terms of uh, form and volume. I'm gonna push that back leg into the background by darkening it. Darken up some of these toes here. Darken up that the tip of the beak over there a little bit more. <clears throat> All right, that's cool. So we're starting to get some forms reading. It's starting to look like something. And I'm going to subtly indicate, again, the, some of the forms I'm seeing in, in within the wing. And I'm still, I'm going to simplify what I see again.
All right, cool. Now I'm gonna make some adjustments to that layer. Yeah, just make it a little more saturated. I think that's good. So now I'm gonna start painting on top of everything, on top of my line drawing. It's gonna be on the very top layer. I will do, ooh, sorry. Let me indicate, let me go back and actually indicate some dark accents, like the eye and the beak a little bit more before I get carried away. So I'm doing another clipping mask. Oops. Flippy, you're saying, I know training your eye is important with color, but how come color picking from the image is frowned upon? Uh, I don't frown upon it. <laughs> but usually when you color pick, it's only to give you a quick range <clears throat> of what the color and value is. If you color pick, it's often not going to be accurate or what you want to use, right? Because there's obviously like millions of different variations of color when you're color picking here. So the likelihood of you color picking the right value and color is, uh, you know, very low. So even if you're color picking, you want to make some adjustments to it. You know, it, it really, I don't know why people frown upon that. It's just make, like if, if I wanted to get that color right, I can, you know, it's just going to take me longer. But again, if you have difficulty with, uh, you know, make selecting colors right, then yeah, try practicing, you know, make choosing the right color without color picking. If you have difficulty doing that, then for sure train yourself, right? But if you don't have that issue, then, you know, you could color pick, it's no problem. I'm gonna make that dark a little cooler to create some contrast between the uh, warm pinks. I'm gonna make an adjustment. So yeah, see I'm adding some blues to that gray so that that beak looks a lot cooler. But still that pink's mixing in there, right? looking weird here so that's why I wanted that base to be the same color everywhere so that I could get some of that color peeking through and I'll put this around the toenails as well with the claws I guess these aren't nails and in the tips here a little bit there and I'm looking for areas where it's cooler <clears throat> overall, just to harmonize again the colors. So around that cheek area. And how do you see that? It's sometimes very subtle. So I'm just trying to exaggerate what I see. I see a little bit of coolness under the wing, so I'm just gonna throw it in there lightly. And right under the neck area. A little bit here. <clears throat> All right, now let's do our first lighting pass. Hey, David. Hey, CG Random. How to blend color? Uh, we'll do, well, like I said, um, start with a base that is a mid-tone, mid-hue uh, for the entire image ha and have the colors, like whatever you're painting over, uh, be transparent so that some of that color peeks through like you could see in the beak That's how you kind of blend color if you're talking about value. You're gonna we're gonna do that Very soon. So now I'm doing my first light pass. Let me try color picking here For the light. Let's try it. It might be too bright, but we'll try it out I'm gonna go back to a heart brush <clears throat> Lower the hardness on my brush edge a little bit 
So yeah, wh whenever I color pick, I'm just lightly going over it, creating some uh, variation in values so that I could color pick again if it's too bright. Like that. That looks about right. And again, it doesn't have to be like the photo as long as it's close. Uh, and what I'm looking for now is really to describe my forms and my lighting. <clears throat> and I'm looking for hard edges in the form. So right here where that jawline is, right? I'm creating an hard edge. I see that shape right there, right? So I'm going to draw a hard edge there. And I'm going to fade out the edges, like soft, soften up the edges, kind of like that. And of course there's areas that are kind of like a sphere like this head so it's going to have more of a uh, highlight instead of a hard edge and i'm looking under that eyelid or the eyelid the top of the eyelid and there's a highlight on that so i'm going to indicate that i'm going to exaggerate the cheek highlight even though it's not super volumetric there i'm going to exaggerate what i see to give it some form. And I'm paying attention to the shape of that hard edge. I don't wanna just make it like a subtle curve like that. I wanna create shapes. And there's like some feathering there, so I'm gonna break it up a little bit. And there's that cheek going across the head, feathering out. So I'm gonna have that hard edge there as well. And I'm gonna make my brush size larger and feather it out a bit. There's a hard edge under his head area right here. I don't know if you can see that, see that edge where it looks like he's wearing like a little wig. I'll draw a line there. Whoa. Like that. So I'm going to show that off underneath it as a hard edge as well. And it's subtle though, but that way you're showing off like interesting forms uh, when you're paying attention to those little things. And my light direction is uh, coming from, it's basically coming from the top. The way I know is I'm looking at the eyeball and the highlight on the eyeball. It's not really too much to the left or right. It's maybe slightly from the right, but it's basically top down. But slightly from the right, it is slightly from the right. Hey, MBJ, hi, how, do, do you usually do all your color on the same layer? Uh, no. Right now I'm on different layers. So my highlight layer right now is on a completely different layer. My mid-tone, my base colors are on a different layer and my shadows are on a different layer. Oops. All right, let me bring my reference a little bit closer so I can see it. All right, let's keep going. So yeah, now I'm painting over that hard edge that I created because that form isn't super volumetric, right? It's just a subtle bump there on his cheek, right, and jaw. But I'm still retaining the shape I created, right? That's why I want to show off my forms clearly in the beginning, even though it's quite exaggerated. Then I could make it more subtle later on by painting over it with a lighter value. So, okay, let's go. And I'm, I'm going to basically ignore the subtle uh, feather textures on it. I could add that in later. Unless it's like pretty significant, I'm going to ignore it. 
but you'll see that I will pick up some of that uh, feather uh, layering just because I, in my mind it's significant uh, enough to show it off uh, because like there might be a little subtle muscle there or um, a thicker layering of feathers that I want to show off. Now I'm going to erase out some of it on the edges because the uh, values are getting w washed out a bit. All right, cool. So let's keep going down the uh, down this area. I'm going to change the color. Now, obviously, the wing area is... Uh... Hey, Rory. Oh, yeah, yeah, you drew a lot of uh, birds. <laughs> yeah, they're fun to draw. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, obviously the overall values and the color in the wing is different compared to the head and the neck area of this, uh, of this scarlet bird thing, right? So we are going to change it up. I'm, I'm going to just color pick again. What's wrong with that? And we're going to see if we could get it close to what I want. Let me see. I'm going to start with the top, the forms on the top. And we got to make decisions on our hard edges. That's a little bit too dark. So like I said, you, eventually, you usually have to make some adjustments. Even though you're color picking. So I'm seeing that hard edge in the center part of that shape that form there on its back it might be too light here so i'm going to color pick off of the uh, value that i just created now i'm on that lower large wing and I'm describing that hard edge that you see right here. See that hard edge where that form changes? It's like a different layer. So I'm showing that off. And again, I gotta remind you guys and remind myself, this is just a study, right? Don't get hung up on it if it's not looking great or whatever, simply a study. Um, yeah, get what you can out of it, and that's it. So I'm going to subtly indicate the top of that wing form. I'm going to leave it pretty rough for now. I know the colors are off. I'm just going to keep going and make adjustments later on. I too am honestly getting a little lost here, but we'll make it work. So I'm looking at that edge here where the transition of the forms are happening. And I'm going to focus on the shapes that are there. indicate that as well. All right, cool. Uh, let's keep going. 
going. Let's bring, let's look at the larger feathers that are here and indicate the uh, tops of that as well with the light. Again, I'm trying to focus on the shapes here. And they look quite random, so I'm just gonna make it the way I want it to be. Oops. Again, I'm starting with a hard edge and I'm fading it out, as you can see, to a softer edge <clears throat> as it goes away from the light. And doing feathers can be quite intimidating, again, just because it looks so crazy, like there's so much layering. Always try to simplify what you see and make sense out of it, organize it, look at group, try to make groupings of things, right? Or else it could get out of control. And I'll kind of walk you through how I'm grouping it after I indicate it here. Or maybe it's obvious how I'm doing it if you look at it. All right, let's go down here. And that's the tail feather part. And I am gonna lower the value quite, quite a bit since it's back here, I wanna keep it dark. Exaggerate how dark that is. And there's a little feather sticking out here or whatever that is. I'm not even sure what that is, but it's sticking out. So I'm going to indicate that and a little bit of that. This area is catching some light. Yeah. So whenever there's shadows and the light skips, it's always a nice opportunity to show volume and depth in your image as well. So you want to definitely take advantage of those situations. Cool. So we're going to stop there for a second. Get a drink. So Flippy's asking, how often do you do these random studies or would they usually be more focused on the project you're currently doing? Yes. Um, I mean, obviously you can do random studies, but again, it is more uh, helpful if they are uh, related to a project you're working on. So for example, if I'm working on a creature that's like this bird, right? Or let's say it's like a dragon with uh, like reddish orange uh, feathers on some of its wings. So it's a mix of scales and feathers, right? then this would be like the perfect study to do, right? Or at least one study I would do to just look at the colors, study the colors, the layering of the feathers and things like that. And the transition, like the variations in colors are. So obviously right now the colors are very off. So I am gonna make that adjustment. <clears throat> um, I think I'm just gonna make a saturation layer. Maybe a multiply, let's try a multiply real quick. See if that works first. Because I do want to build up on the uh, 
the values here a little bit more than I have. So I'm throwing the warms in there where I see it roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect because I, I am going to be painting over this with highlights. That's a little closer, right? <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm going to stop with that layer there, and I'm now I'm going to quickly quickly uh, build up some highlights. Let's start with the uh, beak and the eyes. I'm going to go a little cooler, see if that's too cool or not. The eyes up close are actually blue, violet blue or indigo blue. I didn't notice that. I thought it was just a solid eye, but it's kind of a grayish blue. So let's just throw that in there. And I'm going to throw in a highlight. You don't want to, or I'm going to avoid making the highlight too, uh, too bright. Just do something like that. And again, obviously it's exaggerated. But again, you want to think of how you're going to indicate this stuff when you're doing your own concept. That's way too blue, so I'm gonna make it gray here. And I'm making it cool because, um, well, that's what it looks like in the reference itself, but there, it's nice to have that contrast, right, between the warms and cools as well. Oops. Let's keep going. I'll bring some highlights in there later on. I'm gonna try going brighter here. It's probably gonna be too bright, but I'll just play with it. And yeah, for sure, you guys could be using a texture brush, but uh, for now, I'm not gonna worry about that. The texture brush has benefits, obviously, to quickly indicating things. I'm just gonna make up my own here. or indicate with like little texture scratches.
Add a little bit of highlight here, the top of that beak. And these highlights that you add, of course, you draw a lot of attention to itself, and that's what you want around the head area of any creature or character. So you do want to save your brightest highlights generally for the upper body or head area of a creature or character. And I'm going to break up these shapes now with smaller details just to again indicate uh, the texture. This is what really brings things to life. All the little subtle things that you're adding here to make it look more believable. Once you have a good solid base down, right? <clears throat> and I'm also going to be refining my silhouette as I'm cleaning it up now. The little details in the silhouette also really help show off the overall shapes and uh, the forms or texture in your design as well. So you can see I'm showing off the direction of how the feathers are layered here within my silhouette. And yeah, like, like you were saying, uh, Margaret, at this point, I could actually stop. I could be like, okay, I'm cool with this. I understand like the feather textures, how to show off the head the, and the contrast between the beak color and material compared to the small feathers in the head and neck area. I might stop there, but um, yeah, if that's all you want to get out of it uh, and the overall color transition. But for now, we'll just keep going. And again, I'm going to indicate the silhouette, the textures in the silhouette right here under that neck and clean up the shapes. And uh, I think it was a uh, Patrick who was asking about the style, exaggerating or practicing on a style. Again here, this is where I could exaggerate. Where in the photo, the textures of the feathers are very subtle, right? But here I can make it more obvious and really play that up. Right? I mean, again, there's different levels to exaggeration, right? So I'm not going to go crazy here. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, you could definitely push things. All right. S -s -s -s. 
Yeah, it's easy to get lost here. A little different layering going on. I'm just trying to indicate that white in the deep parts of the, uh, or underneath the layers of the feather. Not sure if it's going to look right, but I'm just trying it out. That's looking a little odd. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do to fix this area to make it look more natural. I'm just wondering if it's worth the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could paint over this to make those transitions smoother. Because the values are quite, it's pretty contrasty there. And I could bring in some more darks to in to bring back uh, some of that form in the shadows. Let's add some highlights to the feet a little bit. Just quick indication. And we could bring in some more saturation here. But really, I'm pretty much done with this now. I'm gonna move on to something else. Maybe that's how you know, that's one of the ways you can know when you're done with something is you just feel like you're done with it. <laughs> you're tired of it, you're getting bored, you're not getting anything else out of it. So you can move forward. All right, cool, uh, let's try something else. We don't have too much time, but I think we have enough time to uh, try one more. Maybe we, I kind of want to try these wolves. That one's kind of cool too. Let's try this one. I'll do the wolves next time. Oops. Okay. 
Wolves or the fox? Okay. Yeah, I'll do the wolves next time. So I'll do the fox. This time, I think I'm gonna try a different approach just to show you guys. You could do this without a line drawing. You could cut, maybe we'll sketch in a line drawing real quick, but um, we'll kind of treat it like a speed painting in a sense. Oopsie. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the colors are nice. Yeah, it's probably uh, close to sunset for that. It makes the colors look even more vibrant. Alright, cool. So uh, let's sketch this in real quick. And I don't think I've ever drawn a fox before, so this will be challenging because the proportions are quite subtle and even the facial features are quite subtle. Uh, it has obviously unique uh, proportions. The legs are pretty long compared to like a dog. Uh, the ears are really big. So bear with me. I'm going to probably be making a lot of adjustments later on. But that's why we're going to treat this like, again, a speed painting. Um, I'm going to really sketch it in real quick first. You can see how rough my sketch is. I'm going to stretch them out horizontally a little bit. All right, let's go with this one. So I just spent a few minutes on that sketch. Let's just block it in. Let's try a different approach. I'm going to color pick. We will make the uh, sketch a multiply and paint underneath it. <laughs> Chinese master. All right, so um, let's pay attention to the silhouette. Let's try to focus, really look at the shapes. Using a larger brush in this situation works better, but I am constantly uh, changing the brush size as depending on, you know, what I'm doing here. Again, like you guys should also practice speed painting. Uh, there's different benefits, uh, of course, to practicing speed painting just again learning quickly how to respond to an image and uh, train your intuition and your hand-eye coordination 
your ability to focus, things like that. And again, you're just not, uh, you know, spending too much time on one image as well. You're able to do more studies that way and not get caught up in the details, basically. <laughs> yeah, it is wonky, right? Yeah, I mean, again, don't get caught up in like what it starts off looking like or as a pretty drawing. Um, it depends on what you want to get out of it. If you want to practice a pretty drawing, go ahead. Uh, but in my case right now, that's not what I'm focused on. Uh, I want to focus on the colors and I want to focus on the forms. It's not going to look the same probably, uh, but it's fine. All right, from here, I'm going to darken this up a little bit just to create more of a value range. And again, I think I will just do a clipping mask and then quickly throw in darker values. Whoops, why is it not working? Oops. I guess that wasn't dark enough. And this is also a way to um, develop style too. Like when you don't have enough time to do all the uh, details of an image, you could, uh, you have to simplify. You might come up with a style that works better. All right, so I'm going to separate that head from the body a little bit with value. You can see on the left side that silhouette is clear, but not so much on the right side. So I'm going to darken the body over there slightly to separate it a little bit better. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna kill that sketch a little bit. Erase that eye because it's wrong. And let's keep going. Uh, Joel, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're funny. Uh, I'm just darkening up the values a little bit, like bringing in some mid-tones. A few areas. I'm not, I want to define this edge here, but I feel like I'm going to get caught up in the details. So I'm just going to leave it. All right, let's do a light pass. So through adding the shadows, I kind of see my light direction, right? I'm also going to go back here and darken that base a little bit, slightly darken my shadows a little bit. 
so I have more of a uh, base to work off of, a value range. All right. Once again, I'm looking for my hard edges. I'm looking for the for large and medium forms and where those edges are starting. I see one there, right behind the shoulder. So I'm paying attention to the shape. There's a shape here behind the rib cage area where that those hind legs start. Proportions are a bit off, but I'm just gonna ignore it for now. Or try to ignore it. Uh, yeah. And I'm looking at the shoulder area. There is a hard edge before his neck starts. This way it's going the opposite way because the lighting is coming from the right. Show off that neck transition. And I'll try to define under its chin or its lower mouth. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going too tight with this. Uh, I want to go a little bit faster. There's another layer here before the forearm. I think I'm going slower because it's hard to read what's going on here. Uh, so I'm like hesitant to just mark things up. But I'm trying to push through this. So there's a layer of fur like hanging off his bicep area. Before over the forearm. The colors look like Eevee. Or is it Eevee? No, what am I talking about? Uh, Pokemon, what is that? Is it Eevee? <laughs> The one that uh, evolves into um, Jolte Jolteon or... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's keep going. I'm actually gonna try to change up the colors uh, without trying to change it later I'll change it right now that's what I should have done but I got caught up in the little details here this is always more challenging just to go straight to the correct color it's easier for me to build up like the, the uh, values first right and then adjust the colors.
Oh, that's quite difficult here to read. But again, I got to try to simplify that read. All right, cool. This isn't turning out great, but you know, it's okay. Um, I'm learning that with, I, I guess I'm just learning how to go direct with color here. I had to practice that more. It's quite challenging to do. I thought it would be easier here, but as I'm drawing it or painting it, it's not really reading well. But let's just keep moving forward. Yeah, again, sometimes things that you feel like are going to be easy to do end up being a little more challenging. And some things that you feel like are going to be easy and you underestimate it ends up being very challenging. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. The wolves probably would have been easier. <laughs> Uh, so from here, I'm going to start adding the cools in. Let's throw that in there, see what that looks like. Make it a little bit bluer. Oh, I should exaggerate that color a little bit more. And again, not trying to get the color too accurate, that's not the point, but definitely want it to be cooler. Or cool so that there is that contrast.
I'm actually going to make a, an adjustment in the lighting if you look carefully. There's reflected light coming off the left side, that's cool, and so that part is just actually on the left side of that fur, but I'm going to switch it to the right just because it, it, I feel like it's easier to uh, describe and render. So see how I'm making that hard edge to the right instead of the left. Here too, around the nose, I'm gonna simplify the lighting a bit. and throwing down the cools on this side of the leg as well. <clears throat> and I'm probably gonna go in with some darker accents. Hey, Flippy, thanks. I need the encouragement right now. Perfect timing, thanks. <laughs> I don't think I was, I was being too positive about this speed painting. Just going in with a rough sketch, I thought I was a genius. So I'm like, I could do this, I could pull this off, but I ran into some issues here. <laughs> But again, you also have to learn to push through. Sometimes it could look like a disaster, but um, you know, trying to make it work is an aspect that you need to develop as well. Um, yeah, sometimes, like I said before, things don't come out the way you expect it to, uh, but you just gotta push through sometimes and make it work. You, sometimes you don't have the time to start over, you know, especially if you're on a deadline. And you gotta just figure it out and do the best you can with the time you have and push through. Definitely there are times when you should start over if you can, but other times you can't. And right now I don't have the time to start over. So yeah, here I'm kind of going in there, slowing down because I am doing the eyes. Uh, I want to show off uh, the characteristics of a fox's eyes a little more accurately. I don't want to wing this part too much because it's not going to look right if I do. And as I'm doing this, the details on the eye or the face, I'm also thinking that I'm probably going to make adjustments because I'm not really paying attention too much to the placement. Obviously, uh, the facial features in an animal or person, they're very specific, right? So they have to be accurate. And again, it's quite challenging to get it right on the first try. Maybe there's people that can do that, but I certainly can't. Um, Again, it's not something like I draw foxes all the time. I, I think this is my first time drawing a fox. 
so yeah it's, as much as I would like to think I'm I'm a genius and I could do this <laughs> I, I, I can't most of the times I can't what do you know do it in one shot And it looks like the eyes are way too far apart, right? So I'm going to cut this out and just bring it closer. And probably a little bit. Yeah, this eye is, I'm gonna cut this eye out too. Do you guys do this? I do this all the time. Where I'm just correcting stuff last minute. <laughs> so sometimes my draw my final painting will look completely different from my initial drawing like proportion wise and all that hey tatum thanks Hey, by the way, for the record, I'm not Chinese. <laughs> ah. so that highlight, cool highlight on the nose, or slightly cooler. Yeah, so forget the speed painting. It started off as a speed painting, but now I'm just trying to um, figure out how to make this look like a fox. All right, so I'm breaking up the silhouette a little bit as I look up close. Kind of lay up, layer, pay attention to the layers there in the fur.
Yeah, I gotta focus more on this large shape here that I'm seeing. I'm kind of missing that. Our shape around the uh, brow area. Oh, I gotta increase the size here of the silhouette. Yeah, there are a lot of types of fur. Like the bison is like a super thick fur, right? It almost like it almost looks like dreadlocks, which would be cool to try to paint up. Um, yeah, and there's shorter haired animals, and this is probably like somewhat medium, right? And again, uh, if I have more time, I will probably slow down and check out some different brushes. You guys should be doing that. For this, I don't want to get distracted by trying to select the right brush. Um, so I'm just using a normal round brush. It also shows you guys that you guys don't have to get too fussy about the brushes. Uh, you can just paint with a regular round brush and a soft brush. Uh, it's all possible. Yeah, this edge is gonna is quite challenging challenging to show off. Um, in this case, I would really have to slow down to make that look right. This blending into the neck. But we don't have time to do that. We gotta go a little faster. I should really bring in more darks in here on the left side of the uh, fox, the fox's face. But in some ways I want it to look a lot lighter than uh, the reference itself. But I'll put in a little bit more, see what that looks like.
Well, let's draw in the eyes real quick. Looks very similar to the orange around the eye, actually. Just gonna put it in very simple. And I'm going to add a slight gradient to the eye, iris part. And a slight highlight. Kind of looks like a wolf the way I did it, huh? Snout's probably too big. <laughs> Looks soft, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so when I'm looking at the overall proportions and all that, it is off. It looks kind of like a wolf. Certain parts really have to get uh, repositioned, like the eye, I feel like, is too uh, far apart still. And uh, the overall sh proportions of the head look too big, like a wolf. Or the shape of the head, yeah, it's too wide, probably. But again, uh, the thing that we did learn or get out of this is uh, the difference in color temperatures. We got cool light here, or shadows here, and uh, warm light coming in. We got that at least, and we practiced uh, indicating the fur again from the cool side and the warmer side and having a transition there. 
that's really what I wanted to get out of this. I could spend some more time on this really to get the most out of this transition here, but we are out of time. Hopefully uh, this was fun for you guys. I had fun. And uh, yeah, have a good week guys. Keep drawing, keep doing your studies. And I, I am certain you guys will keep getting better. Just like I'm getting better as I'm doing these studies. All right. See you guys. Have a good week. Bye.